Welcome back to the Pro Football Hall of Fame right here in Canton, Ohio, the most inspiring place on earth. My name is Jake Wright. I am the Youth and Education Manager here at the Hall of Fame, and we are super excited for our next installment of our Before the Snap series today featuring Cleveland Browns' own Riley Hicklinski. And we'll get to her in a second because I know you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear all about her great career. We're going to talk about what she does on a day-to-day -day basis, her involvement with the draft that just happened here a few weeks ago or last week, and, and what her life looks like moving forward as we get closer and closer to a new NFL season. For those of you who have never been here before, this is your first time tuning in. First off, thank you so much for giving some time to learn about all the different careers in and around the NFL. We know you can be a pro athlete. We know you can be a coach, but there are so many other different careers in and around the NFL. And that's why this program is here to showcase all those different cool and unique careers that you can have truly in the entire sports industry. If you've seen this program before, again, thank you so much for tuning in. You're in for another excellent excellent program today uh, to learn what uh, somebody on the football side of an NFL organization does. Here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, our mission is to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence everywhere. Those values we promote are those of commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence, all of which not only make our Hall of Famers, Hall of Famers on the field, and great football players, they make them great men, great fathers, sons, brothers, whatever it might be, and these values truly can make you the best employee that you can be. And you'll hear how these values pop up all throughout the program today. And it just goes to show how important they are. Now, before we get started, I do have some thank yous I'd like to pass out. First off, Riley, thank you so much for giving time today to be a part of the program uh, and, and giving up your time. I know it's been a hectic couple of weeks for you leading up uh, to this program today, but thank you for being a part of the program. And truly, thank you for everything you've done for the game of football. Uh, your career has been short with the Browns. Uh, but you don't know how much impact you've had on the game of football and indirectly on us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So thank you so much uh, for, for your, your time today and all you've done for the game. Secondly, I'd like to thank our teachers and administrators here today uh, who allowed us to come into your classroom and, and truly showcase all the great careers in and around the NFL. Uh, and then lastly, and probably most importantly, our students. Thank you so much for, for tuning into this program. Uh, both today, all the programs before, and all the programs we have coming up. You guys are the ones who drive the program. I know you don't want to hear from me. We got Nathan out there again watching, looking for those questions. I know he's eager to get some Facebook questions asked today. If you have a question that we don't touch on, make sure to submit it to us. Let us know where you're watching from, what school you go to, what's your name, and we'll do our best to make your question as part of the program today. First off, as we, as we do all the time, let's, uh, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know those, those schools we got represented today to see how far across this country we can reach. So again, if you got a question, submit it. We can't ask it unless you type it in there in the comment section. So please, if you got a question, submit it there. So today, we are lucky and grateful to be joined by Riley Hicklinski, a scouting assistant with the Cleveland Browns. A 2020 graduate of Indiana State University, Riley was a scholarship student athlete uh, there before transferring to ISU to finish her academic and athletic career in only three years. Pretty cool accomplishment. Um, as a Division I softball player, she learned the importance of hard work, teamwork, multitasking, and her experience as a student athlete opened the door and gave her opportunities during her undergraduate career to contribute to her work that she does now with the Cleveland Browns. She served as a group leader at the Reese Senior Bowl for Jim Nagy, interned at the University of Kansas football program under then head coach Les Miles, and interned for the ISU athletic department um, during her time at the school there as well. She was born into a football family. Her father is the offensive coordinator at San Diego State University, and her grandfather is a former football coach and NFL scout. Raised around football and the attributes of the game uh, that helped her with her love for the game uh, from her granddad and her grandfather or her dad and her grandfather. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our special guest this week, Riley Hicklinski to the program. Riley, welcome. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to all of you and answer any questions that you have. So fire away. No question is too small, too big. I'm excited just to talk and tell you guys a little bit about what I do and about myself. 
Awesome. Well, I like I said uh, in another program this week, uh, perks of being the host is I always get to ask the first question. <laughs> uh, and if you watch the program before, we always like to set the basis on and just learn a little bit about your career. So as a scouting assistant for the Browns, what is does your day to day look like? I know it probably changes throughout the year, but a normal day to day in the life of uh, a scouting assistant, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so right now it's pretty relaxed. We're doing a lot of um, professional development stuff. Um, after the draft and moving into the summer. And then once training camp starts, we'll start going out to practice, evaluating the roster, seeing who's out there, who's making some noise that was maybe flying under the radar and obviously see how the stars are doing out of practice. Um, during the year, during season, we do a lot of pro scouting, a lot of college scouting. Um, we do a lot of cross-check work for our college scouts and for pro stuff, we evaluate almost every team in the league, which is awesome. and. I get a lot of exposure doing that and then finding kind of the path I want to take and finding out what aspects of the game I love and I'm interested in. So like you said, the day-to-day -day changes, but I get to do a lot of different things, which is great. So I know, like you say, day-to-day, -day, it's different depending whether you're in preseason, you know, summer workouts during the NFL season, you know, recently, you know, the NFL draft hot topic, really kind of the start for this <laughs> new NFL calendar year. Um, so for you specifically, you know, leading up to the draft, what were some of the things you were doing? And is there a lot of work for somebody in the scouting department, you know, during the draft? Or is all that work culminating in the NFL draft? And you're there just to kind of provide insights and maybe some tips and tricks uh, on different players. I would say definitely leading up to the draft, it was awesome. We were involved in meetings. We got to sit in and listen to what um, our upper level execs were saying about certain players and it was neat. Our scouting assistant group is close and we got to get together and we were watching film on guys that maybe we had differing opinions on or were seeing different traits differently. So that was really neat leading up to the draft was we were just sitting down and saying, okay, this guy's off the board. So who do we think this team's going to take? This guy's off the board. Who do we think is going to be here? And kind of messing around with some mock scenarios, which was really neat and really exposing you to, okay, if you ever are in a GM position, how do you make a decision quick? How do you find the best fit for your team? but also how do you comprom compromise essentially between scouting and coaching and find a player that both sides are going to like and ultimately help you win. So I got to say, you know, looking at the draft, was there's a player out there that you maybe had your eye on that the team took, or is it full? Is it truly, you know, a team effort when it comes to, you know, evaluating players and, and truly picking, you know, the future of your organization? I think it's a team effort. I mean, every, person in that building has an opinion and every person in that building has a different opinion and a different perspective and if you can take those different perspectives and different opinions and bring it together and it's kind of like math it's figuring out the best problem and figuring out the best solution that integrates and again ultimately helps you win so it's definitely a team effort all around and that's one of those cool things that that we can go back to the game of football because that's truly you know, something you can learn, from, you know, and it's not just football, you know, here at the mm -hmm. Hall of Fame, and you'll hear, you know, we're unapologetically football, so we're going to kind of use the attributes that the game teaches and, you know, apply them to your everyday life, and you mentioned teamwork right there being one of the most important ones um, to start out with, so um, kind of diving into your career, um, you know, you mentioned scouting assistant, your career, you know, your path leading up to that, how did those experiences you had, and, you know, I mentioned working under a coach like Les Miles, Jim Nagy, who's obviously was a big name uh, in the news leading up to the draft and the senior bowl, which gives so many athletes a huge platform to show themselves and show their potential. And there are people that, that make their careers and break their careers in, in that senior bowl experience. So what was, what were those experiences like for you? And what was something you took away from those that you're able to apply to your life and career now with the Browns? Yeah. So starting with Kansas, I would say I understood how to, honestly, how to multitask at the college level. You're juggling a lot of different hats and during summer recruiting and football, it's not the most exciting thing at the, at the time, but at the same time, I got to be involved in scouting and recruiting. I got to sit in on some meetings and I got to learn what it's like to build a championship culture and how to change a culture. Cause that's the hardest thing that anyone can do is how do you change a culture from a program that consistently loses to a winning culture? And you going through that process, you find things that you like and that you don't like. Um, so I would say that's the biggest thing I learned at Kansas. And then the senior bowl, the draft truly does start in Mobile. Through and through, a thousand percent believe that. It was one of my favorite experiences. I can't thank 
Mr. Nagy enough for the opportunity to work there. And the best thing I learned there is I got to sit with former players who were other group leaders and just pick their brains about, okay, what are you seeing on this play? What are you seeing with this guy? What do you think about this drill? Because drills obviously make up a lot of practice. You're not always in live periods. So how do you find different traits throughout those um, team periods and individual drills that maybe translate to your evaluation? And it was neat to see everyone's different opinions and honestly be around people who share the love of the game for football. And I think you can tell, I mean, we're only about 10, 11 minutes into the program, but you can definitely <laughs> tell, you know, you have a passion for what you do. Uh, and it's throughout the entire experience, you know, not just, you know, when everyone thinks, you know, working for an NFL team is obviously cool, uh, comes with a lot of responsibility. Um, but it's just like any other job you have, you know, a task you got to do, how hey, you have things, you have to show up and do day in and day out. Uh, but you can tell that you really love what you do. And, you know, the old cliche is that, you know, you never work a day in your life if you love what you do. So why does Riley Hicklinski love being a scouting assistant for the Cleveland Browns? So I love being a scouting assistant for the Cleveland Browns because I work with great people and it's a great organization through and through. And I get to walk into work every day and be me. I don't feel a pressure to fit into some little mold or to act a certain way. And I'm a very energetic, I have a bubbly personality and I get to be me and I, that's all I can ask for. And I get to do what I love and help people find a way to make the Browns win and become a winning program and win a Super Bowl, hopefully one day. So that is why I love being a scouting assistant for the Cleveland Browns. And I just don't think it gets much better. I, and I kind of want to go off that. You mentioned winning, winning a Super Bowl and <laughs> Cleveland fans five, six years ago would have just laughed at that though. Cleveland always thinks they're going to win the Super Bowl every year. Uh, but, you know, okay. recently the, the the success on the field is there. You know, you're, you're a, a play away, a game away from the AFC championship game to get into that Super Bowl. Um, so the, the culture there in Cleveland has totally changed. So when you see success on the field, and you probably see this being on the football side, but does success on the field translate into success, you know, in the office? And there is, is it just, you know, coming out after a win, you know, uh, on a Sunday, is the office in a better mood on Monday than, than compared to a loss? What is that culture like? And do you see some bleed over, you know, into the business side as well when the, the team's performing well? Yeah, I'm excited to see. This is going to be a hard question in a sense to answer because of COVID. We were all kind of separated. I actually haven't been in the office when the business side is in the building. Um, and our group was actually separated from the players and the coaching staff during the season. But just talking to people and feeling the energy in our group, you could tell there was a difference when we were winning and how we played and man, that was such a good game. And you also felt the losses. And I think there is a difference, but every week is a new week. And I think that's the coolest thing that AB and coach Stefanski have installed and everyone is, it's okay. As long as you're winning one play, one drive, one this, it's going to add up and it's a long season. It's not just one, one game and you're in the Super Bowl. You have to win the season. You have to win one thing to get to that ultimate goal that we're chasing. And you mentioned Coach Stefanski there. And Coach Stefanski, you know, uh, last year, you know, had to deal with a lot. You know, coaches not being able to play. You know, coaches not being able to coach. He wasn't able to go to a game. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you look at the staff he hired. And one of those people he hired uh, is somebody we actually got to speak to earlier this year. And that's Callie Brownson, uh, the chief of staff for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, who has not, who not only taking that position was a monumental step for women in the game of football. She ended up having to coach a positional group uh, because of some coaches not being able to be there, which was the first of its kind in NFL history as well. And, you know, our job at the Pro Football Hall of Fame is to document that history. You know, at our core, we are a museum. Our job is to tell a story of professional football. And Cali is a great example of that. So we thought, what a better way to showcase that then kind of go out to our museum and actually look at that artifact. So I've got my teammate, Kara Kwasinski, who's out in our Pro Football Today gallery in front of that said artifact. Uh, and it's going to talk a little bit about that. And I think she's got a question to come back to you, to you, Riley. So Kara, whenever you're ready, take it away. Yeah, of course, guys. Can you hear me? Are we good? Yep, we got gotcha. you. Yes. Okay, cool. As Jake said, my name is Kara. I'm the senior video producer and chief audio engineer here at the hall. And as you can see over my shoulders here, I have actually artifacts from both Miss Kelly Brownson and we have artifacts from um, Sarah Thomas, Jennifer King, um, even Catherine Smith from the Buffalo Bears. I'd like to highlight and monument um, and, and um, keep artifacts here that kind of 
focus the great on the great accomplishments by women in the NFL. So since we were in front of exhibits um, that are highlighting women in the NFL, Riley, I want to ask what type of advice would you have for young ladies or young girls who want to get uh, who want to start working in the sport of football and not just football, but sports everywhere? What advice do you have for them? That's a great question. And it's one that obviously means a lot to me because I was that little girl once. And I think the best advice I have is dream big. Don't be afraid to dream small and don't be afraid to be you. It's okay to be unique. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be a little quirky. I have a huge personality and bubbly. Like I'm sure some people are like, wow, she's really weird, but I'm me. And I think that's the best advice I have is everyone wants to hire a good person as they can teach you what they want you to know. But if you're you, and you're unapologetically you, that's the best thing you can be. And that's going to ultimately help you find success in whatever career path you want to take. Definitely. I love that. I think that's the, that's the truest thing you can be is yourself and you can't fake it. It's who you are. I know um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We spoke with Sarah Thomas. She was on one of our podcasts here that we have at the hall. And she said, you don't love, you don't do it because you want to be the first. You do it because you love it. And it, it makes you who you are and it's your passion. So I definitely that is such great advice to give to young girls around the country, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to throw it back to Jake in the studio. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Kara. Thanks for giving us a, a true insight there and a true look into our museum and, and a great question. And I think, you know, more and more you're seeing women have a huge influence on the game and it just isn't today. You know, it started, uh, you know, with, with people in the media, you know, there's the fab four that include Miss McCaskey, Mrs. Ford, Mrs. Rooney, Mrs. Hunt who have all left their impact on the game. So for, for you, Riley, is there somebody you looked up to uh, when it came to women in the NFL? And how do you see uh, the future moving forward? Is there going to be more involvement, more coaches? You know, you see uh, Lori Locust with the Tampa Bay Bucks just take home a Super Bowl ring. Uh, what does the future look like to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously I looked up to Callie coming into this. She's definitely one of the biggest mentors and biggest people I can say is an inspiration to me. And obviously Coach Lucas, she's awesome. Um, but I think the future is bright. I think you're seeing teams take strides to include women, to be more open-minded, to have diversity on their staff because you don't want robots. You're going, you can definitely find people who are going to agree with you, but does that move you closer to winning? Because at the end of the day, I just want to win just like the next person in line. And if you can build a team of diverse people with different opinions who help you find the best solution for whatever that problem is that's how you find success and I think people are realizing diversity is a key to that absolutely right I, I think that's right on uh with that being said we're going to throw it out to Nathan Martin I know there might be some Facebook questions popping up I think he's got one he wants to ask so I'm going to throw things over to Nathan Martin here for our next couple of questions yeah Jake thank you so much for sending it out here and Riley thank you for joining us uh, for the program I got a little bit different background I got my my fake plants here I've got you know the great Jim Brown behind me you know the goat in a lot of people's minds uh, we had to do that you know with you being with the Browns but uh, we do have a, a question from Facebook and this is just from a fan actually his name is Jay and you you mentioned being down at the senior bowl and talking to other people about you know what do we look for in this drill what do we look for when they're live so mm -hmm. he wants to know what does Riley look for when you're scouting a player or you know, trying to evaluate talent. What are, what are, you, what are some things that you look for uh, right now in your profession, in your career? Yeah, Jay, that's a great question. And I think it depends on obviously what position you're scouting um, and what your team is essentially looking for. Scheme fit is a huge thing, but also you athletes translate. And at the end of the day, if you find a guy who wins contested catches, if you find a guy who's gritty, who's not afraid to stick his nose in a tackle, who's not afraid to go across the middle and take a hit to make a catch, that's huge. And that stuff translates. And I think those are some of the biggest things across the board that I personally look for, but also you're not only bringing in the player, you're bringing in the person. And so understanding who the player is as a person, what he likes, maybe he's into music, maybe he's into fashion and understanding who that player is as a person is just as big and stuff to look for just as much as the player. Yeah, I love how there at the end, because I was going to ask a follow-up, you know, you talked a lot about the traits on the field, the grittiness, mm -hmm. the willingness to go across the middle, you know, so on and so forth. But like you said, you're not just bringing in the player, you're bringing in the person. What's their character like? What are their likes and dislikes? And I think that's so critical because uh, sometimes that can get forgotten when you're thinking mm -hmm. about evaluating uh, players and scheme fits and things like that. So um Great answer to that question. And I, I encourage our audience, you know, 
ask any question. You know, the floor is yours. We want to hear your questions. Riley wants to answer your questions. So, you know, go ahead, comment on Facebook. Tell us where you're watching it from. You know, whether you're a fan, whether you're a student and you want career advice, um, really, really all questions. Like, like she said, there's not really a bad question that you can ask. So I would encourage you to get involved uh, because she wants to answer those questions. And uh, while I wait to get some of those questions, I know Jake has a couple more. So I'm going to send it back to him. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah. And we've talked a lot about your career now with the Browns, but I, you know, you know, we're here to talk about not only how, what your career is and how you got it today, but, but what it was like leading up to that. So I want to flash back all the way back to high school. Uh, you know, when a student in high school, they're trying to figure out what they want to do, what, what career path they want to take. So what would your advice to be for somebody who's in their, those shoes right now in high school, looking for a career, looking for some sort of career path to go down, and what would your advice be to them to how to find that, whether it be sports or music or fashion, whatever it might be, what would your advice be to them right now? Yeah, I think right now, high school, it's a weird time. And especially now in COVID, it makes it even weirder. And so props to you guys for going through school in COVID. I know I have two little brothers and one's in high school and he asked me the same thing. Like, how do I know what I want to do? How do I pick a major? And don't feel limited by your major. Don't feel like I have to go in freshman year knowing exactly what path I want to take because my path changed. I didn't know I wanted to do scouting when I walked in freshman year. I thought I wanted to do sports broadcasting and be the next Aaron Andrews on college game day. And so make sure you're opening your horizons. Make sure you're finding different paths, taking extracurriculars, finding out, okay, do I really love music? Do I love fashion? Do I love sports? And pick a university that fits you and is going to help you grow into a person that you really want to be. So, so you make that decision, you find that career path, you find that university and something that's stressed so much so specifically in the sports industry is the importance of networking and how to get out and meet people. Uh, as people have heard before, you know, that's something I wish I would have done better. You know, I was kind of the person that said, Hey, they don't want to talk to this, this sophomore or junior. I'm just, a <laughs> but looking back, it's something that I needed. I wish I would have done better. So for somebody who's in those shoes now in college, how do you start networking? What are some ways to build relationships? And how do you truly, you know, kind of take that step out of your comfort zone to start to build your network? Yeah, I'm LinkedIn now is huge. And I get a lot of people reaching out to me on LinkedIn. And I wish I used LinkedIn better um, last year when I was trying to figure all this out because I really didn't um, use connections. Use if you meet someone in some place, maybe they know someone else in this place and use use those because everyone wants to help everyone and everyone understands that this business is a connection business and a relationship business. So I used to, last year, I used to drive from Terre Haute, Indiana to Indianapolis whenever a team was playing and I maybe knew someone, I'd be like, hey, do you have 10 minutes to grab coffee? I drove an hour for 10 minutes just to sit and get face-to-face -to, -face to build a relationship. Because like I said earlier, they're not, as much as we're just, we're drafting a player, but we're also drafting the person, they're not hiring me just the scout they're hiring me as a person too so that personal relationship with those connections is just as important as a professional relationship so LinkedIn is huge get involved in your school's football program soccer program athletic program that's how you build connections because scouts come into schools introduce yourself and tell people be like hey this is what I want to do can you maybe introduce me to this person who's coming in I'm sure they'd love to so that's a huge way to build connections too and the cool thing about it is it doesn't stop. Once you get that full-time job, you know, you almost, the doors open to so many more people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, you know, us here at the hall of fame, we work with all 32 NFL clubs. We work with the league office. So we're working with so many different people so that networking never stops to where, Hey, we need somebody for before this. Network. Hey, you know, we're doing a program. Is there a way you can, you know, reach out to your contacts? So just a heads up for all those people in college, networking doesn't stop. You're going to continue to network the rest of your professional career. Um, and kind of along the same lines with networking is, you know, once you get that full-time job, you know, you don't stop learning. You think, all right, done with college, graduated, got the diploma, got the cap and gown. I am done learning, but that isn't the case. You know, you continue to learn day in and day out, um, you know, truly something new every day. So, you know, thanks to technology, Zoom, so many things. <clears throat> excuse me, that help you, you know, continue that learning. So for a scouting assistant uh, and, and someone in your career, what are some things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis or, you know, throughout your time with the Browns to help you make the best uh, scouting assistant that you can be? 
Yeah, and that's a great thing that you pointed out, Jake, that you never stop learning. I tell my friends all the time, I feel like I never left college because of how often I feel like I'm learning something new or I'm doing mini homework assignments is what I call them or trying to learn something through Google or um, YouTube videos. So I think the biggest thing right now that I've learned um, is to listen. As much as there's an importance to doing and to being involved, you learn a lot just by listening. People are going to tell you how they want something done if you just listen, instead of trying to talk over and be like, hey, this is it, right? If you listen and just take notes, don't be afraid to take notes and be like, hey, can you slow down one sec? I need to write this down and make sure I get it. That's a huge thing. And that's something I've learned that makes me better is by being attentive and being a good listener and saying, hey, I'm taking notes. Can we just go back one more time and make sure I understand this? Because participation is huge, but you also don't want to interject just to interject. You want to make sure when you talk, you're adding value to that conversation. And that's one thing that I need to be better on is talking at the same time, but also listening makes me better. And I think that's, that's super important because it's the little things. It, you don't have to have the big grand idea. You don't have to, to make the big amount of money. It's taking notes, talking to people off to the side, getting those, you know, those experiences and can really networking. Uh, you know, inside your own career, inside your own building, because that they've been through it. You know, they, they've seen the, the position you in, they've seen those things. So it, you're able to learn from them just as much as you're able to learn from, from other people outside uh, the organization. I got a message here from Nathan. He's got some more questions. People are starting to roll their questions in now. So I'm actually going to throw it just a couple rooms over here to Nathan to, uh, for some more questions. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. And, and the first question I got is from, uh, a young lady named Carrie, and she wants to know, Riley, what's your favorite football memory? Pretty simple. <laughs> oh, Carrie, there's so many. Uh, I would say with, I'll give you two. So my favorite football memory that is probably family related. Um, my dad was at the University of Michigan and was a football coach there. And um, we beat Notre Dame in the last 10 seconds. And it was a comeback win and Roy Roundtree caught um, a ball in the corner from Denard, I think, and it was one of the best moments. And I remember after the game, we all rushed the field and um, my mom was going through some stuff at the time. And I remember we found my dad and it was my two little brothers, me and my cousin. And we were searching for my dad to call my mom to tell her we won. Um, and it's a sad memory because my mom was going through some stuff, but it's also one of the best memories because we were all just so happy. And it was just, you could feel the energy. You could feel the love in that moment, not only from the fans, but through my family. Um, and then probably professional favorite memory right now was my first home game working for the Browns. And I remember I got downtown two hours earlier than what I was supposed to be. And we were supposed to be down there two hours before kickoff. So I was there four hours before kickoff. And I drove around downtown with my windows down on my car and just took in the energy and the environment in Cleveland. And it was really neat to just see how much the fans love this team and love this organization and through thick and thin, they love it. And it's just great to be around. Yeah. Those both sound like super, super special memories. And I'm sure you're early in your career. You're going to have, you know, countless other memories throughout your career that you'll be able to add, uh, I guess, to that, that scrapbook of memories. <laughs> but uh, another question we've got is from, uh, and I might mispronounce her name, so I apologize in advance if I do, uh, Chania from Appalachian State. And she said, you know, we, we see that you were a college athlete. They can read that in your bio. You played college mm -hmm. softball. Um, but outside of playing college sports, how else were you involved with the athletic departments at the schools uh, that you attended and maybe kind of advice for ways for students to get involved in those same uh, ways that you did? Yeah. Shania, I hope that's how you pronounce it, because I'm sorry if I messed it up, too. Um, but I think the biggest way that I was involved um, was when I got to Indiana State um, and I got hurt. I had surgery on my wrist, and so I was out of softball for a little bit. And I had to kind of find my identity outside of sports because mine was softball. I was a softball player, and that's how I identified myself. Um, so being involved in the athletic department, I worked um, social media, and I did it for men's and women's basketball. I did it for baseball sometimes when softball wasn't um, practicing or playing. And then I also did it for football. Um, and those were kind of some ways that I was able to work in the athletic department while still playing college sports. So did you just like 
roll up into the athletic offices and say, Hey, I'm injured. I want to get involved. What can I do? And they kind of handed you the Twitter account or, I mean, is that how that worked? Like, did you have to formal application? Like what, what are we looking at here? So it started with um, our SID at the time, Patrick Walsh was really helpful. And he was like, Hey, like, would you be interested in helping? And I was like, yeah, of course. Like I needed something to do with my time because I was hurt and it took my mind off of being in pain and being hurt. Um, so then I did go into the, uh, I think it's like the student resource center is what it was called and filled out a student worker application and got paid however much money to work as many hours as I could in a week. Um, and so that was kind of that process. So if you just, if you walk in, everyone's always looking for help and no one should turn down help because all you're trying to do is help them help you. And it's a cycle. So. Yeah. And I, I, it's cool that you mentioned that I can think back to my own college experience. I'm sure Jake can, I'm sure some of our viewers, like that's kind of how it works. You just got to go in and kind of like be you and just kind of say, Hey, Hey, I'm here. I'm looking for experience. How can I help? And then be willing to do whatever they ask you to do. Uh, it might not be as glamorous as running the Twitter account. You know, you might, <laughs> I, I can think when I was in college, one time they gave me a task. I had to like at a basketball game, wipe off the sweat on the floor, you know, during timeouts and stuff. So maybe not as glamorous as running Twitter, but uh, it's experience nonetheless. And you're creating relationships and networking. And really that's the most valuable piece uh, for that. But I encourage, you know, our viewers continue sending the questions. I'm going to do it every time it comes to me. Uh, but, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys, but for now I'm going to send it back to Jake to keep this uh, rolling. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Yes. And I think we're going to dive in now to some more time relevant topics. And, you know, you, we've mentioned COVID, everybody's had to deal with it in some aspects. You specifically, you know, as soon as you started your professional career, you had to, to deal with it. You had to work from home. You mm -hmm. couldn't go into the office. Uh, you know, we had the, the fortunate opportunity to be on another career panel and a totally separate event. You kind of talked about that experience. So what was that like for you having to start your career, not being able to go to the complex, go to the office and have to work from home? And did that help you in a way or do you felt it hindered, you know, the start to your career? No, I think... I could easily sit here and say it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> I think as much negatives as there is, it's also easy to find a positive. And I would say it actually really helped me because I got to sit down and I got to focus in on what my main task is um, with our college and pro scouting process and really understand that and not have any other distraction. So I think it really helped me understand, okay, this is how I can get things done. And also kind of nicely time management wise, move me into the rest of the building before everything else kind of got crazy um, when we got out of the COVID protocols. So I would say it definitely was helpful. Um, it definitely taught me different ways to teach myself different things um, and also be a really good problem solver and figure out things on my own. Um, Cause I don't have someone sitting next to me where I can be like, Hey, what do you think of this? It's okay. You got to be decisive. You have to trust yourself and trust your eyes and make a decision and be confident in that. I think, it, you know, as much of a bummer as it was, I think, you know, that that first time you got to go to the game or got to walk into the complex, it made it just that much more special yes. because it, it was a different year. And, you know, hopefully next fall we are back to normal and back to, you know, what a typical NFL season will look like, not only for the yeah, NFL, for you as well to, to enjoy what a full, you know, opportunity with an NFL organization looks like. Um, so, you know, you, you go through all that, you know, you mentioned going through adversity and having to persevere through that. And we mentioned how the game of football can teach things like that. So here at the Hall of Fame, as I said before, we're unapologetically football. We know the game of football can teach so many life, great life lessons to those who coach it, play it, you know, watch it on TV. You have the, the fortunate opportunity to not only work in it now, but you pretty much grew up in the game. So for somebody in your shoes, what did the game of football teach you and specifically your family? Uh, and how do you apply that to, to your everyday life today? Yeah, I, it taught me a lot of things. I would say um, the biggest thing it taught me is to be me and to be confident in me. Um, moving, I've moved 13 times. I lived in 10 different states. A couple of those were in the same state. So I had to make friends quick. And the best way to do that is to be outgoing, to be bubbly, not being afraid to ask a question, to be hey, I'm not understanding this, can you help me? But also being able to be like, okay, I need to step back and understand my boundaries and know where I'm at and know that I'm the new person. I can't just step in and be like, hey, everyone follow me, I'm a leader. Like, let's do this. It's being able to recognize situations and being able to 
be confident in my job. And um, that's something that I think football has definitely taught myself and my little brothers. And I think as a family, it's definitely taught, taught all of us that you can get through anything together. As long as you have a support system, as long as you have each other, there's nothing too good. There's nothing too bad that you can't get through. And the sun always comes up tomorrow, no matter if you win, lose, whatever it is, it's a fresh day tomorrow. And you got to make the best of every single day, no matter what the outcome of the game was. You know, you know, that's pretty much the life of a football coach, right? You know, <laughs> it's, it's get a job and then the next job is going to come up. I know you mentioned that school up north, that, that that's a bad word in my house <laughs> that, I, that I can't say. Uh, but, but I definitely remember that game. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't against the, the Scarlet and Gray because then it would have been a whole much worse experience for me. Uh, but but yeah, you know, and I think it's cool, you know, you've been through all those and that also provides some sort of experience, especially for somebody mm -hmm. at a young age. So how did, you know, moving all that time, what did that teach you? Uh, was there some sort of perseverance? Was it, did it become like old hat to where like, all right, we're moving again. This is what I got to do to set myself up. And did it get easier as you got older? Or was it something that, you know, it was just, just part of your life? Yeah, it definitely was something that was just kind of part of my life. Um, I definitely kind of had some walls up knowing that in my mind, I was going to be moving in maybe six months. I might've been there um, one season, but it definitely got harder as I moved into high school. High school, like I said earlier, is already a weird time for people. Um, and I moved from Michigan to Indiana in the middle of my sophomore year. And I was trying to understand who I was as a person and where I wanted to go. And just like everyone else. And so that was definitely was a hard time for me, but softball definitely was a saving grace also for me and was kind of my outlet of, okay, this is my space. This is where I can be. I can take out anger if I'm mad I moved or if I'm mad at my mom that day. So having that outlet was definitely something that really helped me and moving was just kind of part of it. And I knew it helped pay the bills and my dad loved it. And that's all that mattered at the time. Absolutely. Uh, just goes to show, you know, how important family is, no matter, you know, what experience that, that you're going through. Uh, you, you mentioned playing college softball, you know, and I think, you know, as a former athlete myself, you know, I retired after high school. <laughs> this means I wasn't good enough to play at the next level. Um, but, you know, when you play a sport, you know, specifically somebody who wants to work in the industry, I think you kind of envision yourself eventually working in that sport. So for you, you know, playing softball, were there any dream to know you kind of work in, in that side of things, work with, in, under the softball umbrella, or was football always in the back of your mind and, and eventually where you wanted to end up? Yeah, I think if you ask my parents, they always thought I was going to be a softball coach. And I think if you ask my coaches, they always thought I was going to be a softball coach. Um, like coaching kind of runs in the blood and I love the game of softball. I do. But I think I, once I got to my freshman year and that was my first year really away from football, um, not being able to go to practice or go to meetings just because my dad was there. Um, I really struggled and was kind of like, okay, this is, I miss football. I want to work in football. And that's kind of when my dream of working college game day set in and was like, okay, this is really, I want to work in football. Um, when I transferred to Indiana State and they didn't have the same major and I was just a communication major. Um, and then I got hurt and got to work at the University of Kansas. That's when I really was like, okay, scouting. This is it. This is what I love. This is what I want to do. So again, like I said earlier, it's a process. You're not going to figure all this out in a month or in two months. I definitely didn't. And if you do, that's great for you. But don't be nervous, sad, scared if you don't have it figured out in two months. Um, so football, I kind of always knew I wanted to, but I definitely did think about softball too. Awesome. Well, Nathan just sent me a message says he's got a great follow-up question to that answer right there from our Facebook audience. So I'm going to throw things his way. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. And, and I think it's a great follow-up. So Carrie, who asked about the favorite football memory, sent in another <laughs> question and wants to know, you know, you said coaching runs in your family's blood kind of, and you can see that in your bio and talk, you talk a little bit about your experience, but now you love scouting, but could coaching be in the future? And if coaching was in the future for you, is there a specific position group that you think you would be best equipped uh, or that you're aiming to maybe coach one day? I don't know if coaching in the future. If the Browns see that fit, I will definitely take it. But um, never say never is something I don't like to say. I don't like saying never because don't want to close off any doors, but um, definitely love scouting. But if I had to pick a position, I would probably say, wide receivers, quarterbacks. That's what my dad's coached. 
Um, and it's what I know. My grandpa was an offensive line coach, but I'm also 5'3". So there's a little bit, bit of a height difference there too um, and size difference in general. But <laughs> coaching, I love coaching. And so if that ever came about, I definitely would be open to it. I think that would be amazing. You're five, three, you've got all these six, five, six, six guys, <laughs> offensive linemen come off the field. They're, you know, sweaty, maybe dirty. It's a muddy game or whatever. And you're just like right down there, like, and you're just telling them what they did, right. What they did wrong. hyping them up. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the route you need to take is the offensive line coach. But if, if scouting works, you know, go ahead, stay in scouting, but uh, yeah, definitely really, really cool. So Jake, I'm going to send it back to you, man. Awesome. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's, that is a cool experience because everybody uh, has a different experience growing up and how they, you know, come to love the game of football. And I kind of want to dive in on that. You know, you mentioned a little bit about your dad and your granddad. Uh, what were their experiences? What were the, some of the positions your dad and your granddad held throughout their careers uh, in the game of football? Yeah. So my grandpa was an offensive line coach consistently throughout his career. Um, and then he was with the Broncos um at a point in time and was an external scout for them and um they called themselves team gray had a cool nickname um and so i grew up um watching him and was a big broncos fan because that's where my grandpa was um and then my dad he's kind of coached all over on the offense he's coached quarterbacks wide receivers running backs tight ends um fullbacks that was meshed in with tight ends at one point um and he's been the recruiting coordinator and now he's an offensive coordinator. So a lot of experience on the offensive side of the ball and got to see them live out their dreams and do what they love. Now, looking at their career is if you can, and this is gonna, might be the hardest question we ask today, but if there is something you could pull from their careers, what would be that one thing that you've learned from them that you try to apply to you know, your life now as, uh, as an employee with the Browns? That is the hardest question of the day so far. <laughs> I would say... I would say empathy. I think as much, and this is a thing going on in today's world, understanding that you don't know what someone else is going through and being able to coach differently to different players because everyone reacts differently and everyone wants to be coached differently. No two people are the same. And so you can't coach them, coach them the same to get the same outcome. Um, and I would say my grandpa and my dad both do a really good job of that, adjusting their coaching style to who they're coaching to get the best out of their players. And not only, on the field but also to make them better people and better men like you stated earlier to be better fathers to be better brothers husbands whatever it is they go on to do in the future because ultimately football ends at some point so you have to be a good person too yep you know we're, we're winding down here and i want to be respectful of your time and all of our viewers time as well uh, i know nathan's sitting on a couple more questions so i'm gonna throw it his way here uh for the last few that he's got uh, from our facebook audience yeah, thanks, Jake. And, uh, you know, you were talking about your experience at uh, Indiana State. And when you were injured, you started doing the social media stuff. And I think it spurred a question from uh, Peyton, who attends, uh, she attends Syracuse University. And she said, what was that like working a social media page for a college athletics program? And really, what does that job entail? Like, What are you posting about? Um, is it just game days? Is it, you know, uh, between games? What's that job entail? Yeah, Peyton, that's a really good question. So for me specifically, what I did, um, I did game day stuff. So whether it was football, men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball, whatever the sport was, I did pregame warm up stuff. I was posting Instagram videos um, and kind of made on my own. Um, I had some privilege and I got to like download the cool apps where you can do multiple videos and one um, story to make it a little fancier because I thought it was cool. Um, so that's really what it entailed is I got to walk around the court. I got to walk around the field and take really neat videos. And thankfully I worked with some really good coaches who let me stand right next to them to get that really cool content. Um, and honestly, it was a really fun job. So it wasn't very stressful. It was more fun than anything. And I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but I loved it. And I got to sit and I watched sports and that's what I loved about it. Yeah, that definitely does sound like a cool job. And I mean, you went the extra mile getting the other apps and making the videos go all together. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a social media, you know, uh, expert or whatever. So that's above my head. But um, another question we got, and this is the last one we've got coming from uh, Facebook. And 
I don't know if people just don't believe you when you say you love scouting, but, you know, we ask about coaching maybe in the future. They want to know, you know, scouting is a natural progression for you then maybe on the player personnel side or even maybe some someday down the road, you know, a GM. Is that a goal of yours? Like, I mean, be, be bold. Like, what is your goal in your career at this point? Yeah, I mean, if I got to be a GM, I'd say that's a dream come true. But at the same time, the journey is the destination. Every learning lesson I go through and everything that I'm learning at this point in time is teaching me something that I'm going to use later down the line, no matter what role that is, whether it's in player personnel, whether it's in coaching, whether it's in player development, whatever that road is, something I'm learning now is going to help me. And so I, my good friend told me this, that you can't look at your next step because the next step is going to be out the door if you don't take advantage of the opportunity you're in now. So really trying to focus in on what I'm doing now. But if I got to be a GM, I, I can't say I'd say no. <laughs> wow, you're like dropping like real wisdom there. The journey's the destination. You can't look at the next step or that step will be out the door. Like, oh my God, those are like retweetable phrases right there, I feel like. So um, for our viewers, I mean, that's great advice, great wisdom from our special guest, Riley. And uh, Riley, I want to thank you for joining us. I know Jake's going to have a question or two to wrap things up, but from me, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you. And, and viewers, students, whoever's watching, if you want to connect with Riley, uh, there's a link to her LinkedIn page uh, in the comments. Go ahead, click on that, connect with her, send her a message, let her know you saw her on Before the Snap. Uh, and I'm sure she'd be more than willing to connect and maybe answer some questions uh, and give some more advice. So Riley, thanks again. And I'm going to send it back to Jake. Thanks, Nathan. All right. We got a few more. We're going to wrap up with here, Riley. Uh, and the first one is, you know, looking at your career or, you know, and this applies to not only students, but, you know, somebody who's a young professional or even a seasoned vet that's been in their career 15, 20 years. Um, for someone looking to get a job, let's just say in sports in general, I don't want to, you know, narrow it down to, to marketing or scouting or, or coaching. Um, somebody who wants to get a job in sports, what recommendations would you have for them to be set apart from others. So what separates their resume? What gets them to that? We're going to interview them pile. What's that one thing you feel like that can separate others from all the applicants that would be applying? Yeah, experience. Experience is huge. And I say that I can't say my resume was filled with experience. My experience was more life just growing up in it. But if you can get involved in your athletic department, get involved in your football program. If you want to work in softball, get involved with the softball program, basketball, get involved with basketball. If you can just have involvement in that sport and understand you under that, you know what it's like to work in that building and understand the dynamics of that sport and how a winning program or losing program works, that's valuable. And that's going to stand you apart. Um, and then understand, don't be afraid to show passion. Don't be afraid to have energy because that doesn't come across in a resume. But also if you get a phone call, be energetic, show that you love what you do and that this is really what you want. I think that's great advice. And that's what we're going to lead us into our last question. I'm going to try and top the hardest question that we asked you so far with this one. Um, and we wrap the program up with this one because it's a great way to sum up everything we've talked about from what you do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to how you got to where you are and the life lessons you've learned along the way. But if all of our viewers, including myself, Nathan, and Kara, if you could leave everybody who tuned in today with one piece of advice, what's that one piece of advice you want them to leave with? Be where your feet are. Don't don't overlook what you're learning in this position that you are right now. Enjoy where you're at. Enjoy the position that you're in. It might suck. It might not be what you want to do for 10 years, five years, whatever it is, but you're learning something in that time that's going to help you down the road. And you might not know it. You might not realize it. It could be something as silly as writing, hey, thank you so much for this. And that's it. And that could help you get another job. That could help you with something down the line to get someone to do an interview with you. Be where your feet are and take in as much as you can in that position, good, bad, and indifferent. Because as much as it's helpful to learn what you like, it's also helpful to learn what you don't like. I think that's great. And a great way to wrap up this installment of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Before the Snap series with our special guest today, Riley Hicklinski of the Cleveland Browns Scouting Department and Scouting Assistant for the team. Uh, Riley, again, thank you so much for being here. And I'll echo what Nathan said. Uh, giving time. Uh, we greatly appreciate you sitting down, talking with us. You know, we learned so much from this program as well, uh, just as all the students we have who are tuned in. So again, thank you so much for giving some of us, giving us some of your time today. No, thank you guys for having me. It means so much to be able to talk with you guys and to hopefully, hopefully everyone watching learned something. So thank you.
before we leave today, just make sure just uh, from our staff, uh, our staff here at the Hall of Fame, make sure you, you subscribe, follow, like, whatever you got to do on social media to all of the great content we have here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame from our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the way to our LinkedIn pages, as well as we have a great podcast here called The Mission, hosted by our great coworker before the snap guest, Jameer Howerton, uh, as he's talking to so many cool people throughout the entire landscape of the NFL. Uh, and make sure you stay tuned. You know, we're wrapping up this program. We only have three left uh, here for our Before the Snap program. And next week, we're going to stay in the scouting world, and we're going to talk to Andrew Raphael from the Baltimore Ravens, who's a scout for their organization. We're going to learn a little bit what he does because he actually doesn't work uh, a lot in the Baltimore area. He scouts a whole different part of the country. So we're going to learn about his unique career uh, and how he got to where he is today. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, you know, the game of football as a whole wouldn't, it, you know, it isn't just a fall Sunday afternoon job. It's a job that you have to do year in and you, day in and day out through the entire year. Um, so, and Riley, your, your job is, is a big part of that. So again, thank you for everything you've done for the game of football. Thank you for everything you, you might not know it, but everything you've indirectly done for us here at the pro football hall of fame in Canton, Ohio. Uh, and I'm sure the Cleveland Brown fans are going to thank you for all the great scouting that you've done to, to prepare those, those draft picks that they've taken, uh, this year. So again, thank you so much, uh, for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you again. I can't say thank you enough. All right, to all of our Facebook audience, again, thank you for tuning in today. From myself, Nathan, Kara, thank you so much. And we hope to see you right here on our Facebook page next week for our Before the Snap series. Thank you, everybody.